Okay, these are the problems that I was asked to do, and I'm gonna do as many as I can. I got about 15 or 20 minutes here left in my prep, so here we go. So we're supposed to tell if the function, where the function is discontinuous and then classify each as removable, non-removable. The only kind of removable is when you can reduce fractions. If you can't reduce them, those are non-removable. So first of all, back in algebra two and pre-calc, you were supposed to learn there's only certain times X values don't work. And that is when there is denominators with variables. That's where a function is discontinuous. So whenever you have variables with denominators, all of these problems here will have discontinuity. Or if you had a square root, you can't have a negative number in a square root. Well, this problem doesn't have a fraction or a square root, so this problem is continuous the whole way. There's nowhere, there's no x value that you can't plug in that will give you some y value. Coming down here to part F, having a flashback to the old days of absolute values, the absolute value of negative 8 is 8, the absolute value of positive 8 is 8. So there are two numbers that can go in here that will work. So one is when the number inside there is negative x plus three, which is just like, just like the problem negative eight at the top, I'm making, letting it be that negative eight. And then these reduce, so this whole thing is negative one. And the other one is when that number in there is positive. So the other one that works is when uh, x plus three is positive, and that one reduces to positive one. So this is removable discontinuity because they reduce out. Now this is like the problem I showed you last week if I was graphing it, which you do not have to do. If you come to negative three, the graph is a positive one for positive values and negative one for negative values. So it's discontinuous here, but it is removable because I could reduce the fraction. And we're gonna to go to the next problem. Problem F is the same thing. So first thing I notice up here is I can redo, I can factor this stuff. So the top one factors to X. I can take an X out of there and then I have X squared minus one. Well, X squared minus one is still a difference of squares. So I can factor that as a difference of squares. And then the bottom one I can factor out an X and I'm left with X minus one. So these x's reduce and those x minus ones reduce. Now in this problem, I'm supposed to be telling uh, whether or not it is continuous at zero because that's where things change and at one. So I gotta do this twice and I have to do the one, two, three. As soon as I see this method, I'm doing one, two, three. So I'm gonna do my first one over here. So I'm gonna say, is there a value for f of zero over here? Well. Here's where x equals zero, so it tells me that value is three, so that works. Two says I need the limit as x approaches zero from the left of the function f, which is gonna be up here because anywhere not equal to zero works up here, so anywhere to the left of zero is this one up here, which is x plus one. So I gotta stick zero plus one in there and I get out one, and then I do the limit from the right of f of x, which is the exact same equation because anything that's not zero is up there. That's zero plus one, which is one. And so that means that the limit as x approaches zero of f of x is one. And then I gotta check, was the first thing equal to the second thing? Well, f of zero does not equal the limit as x approaches zero of f of x because this three value right here does not equal that one value right there. So F is discontinuous at X equals zero. Now we gotta do the same thing for the ones. So I'm gonna do the same thing I just did. I'm gonna do a different color so we can keep them separate. So step one is find F of one. Well, here's where X equals one and that value is two. Then I do the limit as x approaches one from the left side, which is again, that top one, because here where it doesn't equal it, and it is still this zero plus one, so I get one plus one is two. And then I do the limit from the right side, as x approaches one from the right of f, and that is the same one plus one is two. So that means the limit 
as x approaches 1, since both of these were the same, sorry, my pen didn't quit writing when I picked it up. Since those two are the same, the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x is 2. And then step 3, f of 1 equals the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x. So we would say f is continuous at x equals 1 for that same problem. Coming down here to the bottom part, somebody wanted to see this problem. This says we got to find a value of a that will make this continuous. So we're going to do this same thing up here that we just did, but we're going to do it down here. So step 1 is fine. 2 is where it's changing, so we need to find f of 2. Well, here's where it equals 2, so i got to plug it in there. So that's going to be 1.5 times a times 2, which ends up being 3a. And then I have to do the limit as x approaches 2 from the left, which left is less than, so that's going to be this top one. So that's going to be, I can't tell what that says. a squared minus x squared. So I'm going to have a squared minus 2 squared, which will be a squared minus 4. And then I've got to do the limit from the right, which is the same one I just did up here, uh, down here below, because greater than, so that's 3a. So right there is going to be my equation. 3a has to equal a squared minus 4 to be true. So this is a quadratic, so I have to get this function equal to zero. So I have to factor this thing. So a can equal four will work, or a can equal negative one. So now I gotta plug these in and make sure each one works. So if I plug negative one in up at the top, I get negative three, I'm gonna change the color. So these two things imply that this goes to negative 3, and if I plug negative 1 in here, I get negative 3, and if I plug negative 1 in here, I get negative 3. So that means that step 3 is true, that f of 2 does equal the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x, or a equal negative 1. A equal negative one. Now I got to check, and this one worked. So now I got to check the four. So if I put four up there, if I put four in for three times a, that gives me twelve there. If I put four in here, four squared is sixteen, and sixteen minus four is also twelve, and this one is also twelve. So then f of f of two also equals the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x, or a equals 4. So they both work. Going on to the next part that we wanted, it was this c. It says let a and b stand for constants in this function. Find another set of values of a and b where f is continuous. So we're going to have to do these to get this. So find an equation relating a to b. So we're going to do the same thing, except I'm going to skip to the limits because that is the shortcut in finding what I need. So when I do the left, that's the top one up there. So I'm going to put one in and I'm going to get B minus one for the top one. And as I do the limit as X approaches one from the right of F, that's going to be the bottom one. So I'm sticking one in here. So I'm going to have A times one minus two squared, which is going to equal uh, let's see, that's negative 1 and squared is positive 1, so that's A. So the relationship of A to B is A equals B minus A. Then it says find B if A is negative 1. Well, if A is negative 1, I'm going to stick negative 1 in for that A and solve for B. So that means B would equal 0. Now it says graph to show the function is continuous. So I'm going to stick 0 in here. So 1... Let's see, there's the x, or there's the origin right here. So one is this point right here. So if that's one, that's my, that's where it switches. My y-intercept is zero on this graph. So this, the, this top one goes through zero 
and it does not count at once. There's going to be an open circle there with a slope of rise one, uh, rise one over one. So there is that graph right there. And then I want to do this bottom graph. So I got to stick uh, negative, or sorry, a was a was one negative one. So I got to stick negative one in there. So that's negative x minus two squared. Okay, so that's the equation for my y on that one. And I gotta, I can do a t-chart and stick some numbers in. I'm gonna go ahead and stick one in because it can equal one. So if I put one in there, it's gonna be this same value that I get out. Um, now let's go ahead and stick it in there. So if I stick uh, one in for this x, I get negative one squared. I get negative one squared, that's one. And one times negative one is negative one. Let's see. Oh, I did a positive slope there. I messed that up. This should have been a negative slope. The y-intercept is the origin, and it is a negative slope. That graph should have been going like that. I screwed that up. My bad. And then when I plug in 1 here, I get out negative 1 there for that y. So I'm going to do this one in blue. So that fills in that circle. And let's plug in two, I get two minus two is zero. So this goes through the origin right here. If I plug in the next one, it's gonna be three up. So it's a parabola. It's not very good looking parabola, but it goes like that. So that shows it filled it in. So let's find another set of A and B that will make this continuous. So all you gotta do is pick some B. Let's let B be seven. So A is going to equal seven minus one, which is six. There's one that would work. You can let B be anything, plug it in here and it will work. Coming down here to number six, we've got a piecewise function. A piecewise function is these, and this is a sum of two cubes. So I need to know how to factor a sum of two cubes. And when you factor a sum of two cubes, you take off the cubes, you square the first term, you use a sign that's not in the parentheses over there on the left, so since it's, it's x plus two, we're gonna make this x squared minus, and then you got to take x times 2, which is 2x, and then you square 2, which is plus 4, and we still have that x plus 2 on the bottom. So these reduce. So this thing right here is what's left of my function. I'm going to be using that. So I've got to do this one twice like I did the other one. I've got to check a negative 2, and then I've got to check a 1. So we're going to do f of negative 2 first. Well, f of negative 2 is this bottom one. So I'm going to plug negative 2 in for there, so it's going to be 2 times a times negative 2 plus b. So this is going to be negative 4a plus b. And i got to do the limit, and I probably should have just done limits like I did up here because it would have been faster. As x approaches negative 2 from the left, well, that's this top one up here because that's less than 2 up there. And that's going to be this part left over. So if I plug negative 2 in here, I'm going to get negative 2 squared minus 2 times negative 2 plus 4. So that's 4, 4, and 4. That's 12. And then when I do the limit from the right, it's the same as the f of 2, f of negative 2 up there. So it is still that negative 4a plus b. So what that tells me is negative 4a plus b has to equal 12 to work. Okay. Uh, now I've got to go get another equation, so I've got to use my ones for that. So I'm going to do my ones in black here. So I'm going to do f of 1, which it's equal on this one. So that's going to be 1 squared, which is 1. So that's a. 1 times negative b is negative b, and I have a minus 2. And again, I did not really need to do that, and I should have numbered these. And this is 1, and this is 2. So now I'm going to do the limit from the left. Approaching one from the left. This will be my last problem I can do. And left of one is going to be this because x is less than one here. So when I plug one in here, I'm going to get 2a plus b. And the limit from the right is going to be the exact same one up there above. So I got to know, I got to know that 2a plus b is going to equal a minus b minus 2. So I'm going to subtract the a over here, I'm going to add the b over here, and I'm going to have equals negative 2. 
So now I'm going to get something to cancel. So I can see if I multiply this whole line over here, if I multiply this line by four, the A's will cancel. I'm going to do cancellation method. And now when I add these two together, I get 9B equals 4, so B equals 4 ninths. And when I plug 4 ninths, I can plug it into any. I'm going to plug it into that one right there. So negative 4A plus 4 ninths is going to equal 12. I'm going to multiply everything by 9 to get rid of the fraction. On both sides, I'm multiplying by 9. And I'm going to add, uh, subtract 4 over. And divide by negative 36. Let's see, 4 goes into both of those. So it's going to be what? 20, let's see, 8, 24. 4 goes into that 6 times. And then 4 there would be a 9. So that would be a negative 26 ninths and positive 4 ninths for your answer. You're supposed to plug those back in and show they both work, but I'm, I think you guys can handle that. And I've got to get my other class going here, so I will see you guys later.